number one. Keep your eyes open and drive carefully. You should oh, see lots of animals. That's the plan. Most of the animals here in the forest do contain many national markings. Having them blend in pretty well to their surroundings, so be sure to keep your eye out for them. You never know what you're going to find around here. Oh, to the right hand side, you'll see that dark brown animal. Hundreds of thousands have been killed for their horns. Unfortunately, there are only about 40 to 100 left in all of Africa. There's also one lying down way off to the left up there, but we're going to stop for this one. It's a little bit closer to us over here. The black rhinos can charge up to about 35 miles per hour. Their hide is one inch thick. You also see those white colored birds very close to us on the left. Those are the yellow-billed storks. They are carnivorous. They like to feed on frog snakes and small birds. And that nest on the hill to our right belongs to the saddle-billed storks. So we'll also keep our eyes up for a really tall black and white bird running around here. I actually think I see one up ahead of us. Get a little bit closer here. The saddle storks are the tallest of the stork species. There he is. It's rarely ever see him out there. Very rarely seen. The horns go backwards so you can easily navigate through. Oh, yeah, to eight minutes at a time. And at night, they come out and eat about 150 pounds of vegetation. We also see some light color birds over on the island. These are pink-backed pelicans. They like to nest in low tree areas. They live together in colonies. They also work together to herd fish for food into shallow waters. There's another hippo off to the left under the water over there. They are very poor swimmers. Sometimes we do see them moving around underwater, but they're usually just walking along the floor of the river. They propel themselves with their front two legs, a technique called gliding. And when they come up out of the river, they'll wiggle their ears a little bit to get rid of all the excess water. Let's keep on going, see what else we can That is called the bay log. We'll see a few more of those as it's super highway for millions of migrating animals every year. Also home to some of our most famous animals like the lions and elephants. Off to the right, you'll see a couple of really large tan animals called the Patterson's Elands. Closer here, then we'll stop and get some photos. These are the Tommies off to Swift Runners. They can run about 50 to 60 miles per hour, making them one of the top five fastest animals in the world. And they're also very good at escaping their predators by using high speed twists and turns. Because of that great agility, they are one of the few animals that can outrun a cheetah. And on to the left here, you'll see some Ancoli cattle. They look pretty heavy, but they are actually quite hollow inside. They have a very unique honeycomb structure. And they act as radiators. They cool down the animal's blood form before it's returned to the main part of the body. It's a way for them to disperse their excess body heat. Well, the beast is an Afrikaans word that means wild cattle. Just a couple more over to the right. They are also called the new after the grunting sound they make, and they are the largest migration across Africa. With about 1.5 million, the better we can help protect them. There's one off to our left, just on the other side of the hill, but we're going to keep going until we get a nice clear view. We might not expect it, but that wrinkly skin of theirs is actually quite sensitive. They do have to protect themselves from the sun's harmful rays. We're going to pull up ahead to this watering hole and see if we can find any of those elephants up ahead here. Well, the female elephants have a gestation period of about... Aww. Those babies weigh about two to 300 pounds at birth. They stick with their moms till they're 13 to 15 years old, making theirs the second longest childhood of any animal. After us humans, of course. A baby over there is probably just about five months old, judging by her size. But by now, she's probably quickly approaching about 600 pounds. Coming up on the left, it looks like we'll see a flock of flamingos. These are the greater flamingos. They are the palest of the species. They get their color from their diet. They feed primarily on tiny brain shrimp, other wild creatures that are really high in carotene and type of vitamin A. The kerosene from the food will turn their feathers pink. When they're born, they start out as more of a grayish color, and as they grow older, they will get just a little bit more vibrant. Greater flamingos. Thank you.
pronunciation of an Afrikaans word. And that word is bite. It means wide. It refers to their broad square mouse. It's an adaptation they have breeding on the low grasses that grow right here in the savannah. This little baby over to the left is probably just about seven or eight months old. We'll stop right up here. The white rhinos. Now they do have very poor eyesight, making them an easy target. They dig out the burrows with their tough snouts and at night. Fill back in, leaving their razor sharp tusks exposed to ward off any predators that might be around. Yeah, it's kind of surprising. They can run up to about 30 miles per hour. Pretty good for the short little legs they have. Yeah, Pumbaa is not Swahili for warthog. It actually means foolish. Let's pull up a bit further here. We'll take a look at those pot to box. We should be able to see them again. Close to us, you'll see the addicts weighing 130 to 250 pounds. Those addicts are very well adapted to their desert surroundings. They can go nearly an inch.